Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you um, for joining our latest session in our webinar series on all things related to direct mail and direct marketing production. I'm Sylvia Taylor, Chief Marketing Officer here at ProList. Um, our session today is going to be on informed delivery and the fall um, United States Postal Service's informed delivery promotional campaign. It's a hot topic for sure, especially with the timing, which coincides with the fall rate increase that's rolling out on August 29th. Um, and this session is a very specific, very hands-on how to do it webinar. We'll cover the specifics of informed delivery and the rules and regulations of the promotion itself, as well as the changes from last year's promotion, if you all remember that. So without any further delay, let's get started. Uh, I do have Dave Lewis here with me today. Dave is president of our sister company, Snailworks, and I know he's anxious to begin because there's a lot to cover in this session. There are just a few quick housekeeping items I would like to mention before we get started. Uh, if you do have questions during the presentation, please submit them on the chat. Uh, time allowing, we'll be doing a short Q&A at the end of the presentation. And also as an attendee, you will receive a copy of this presentation as well as a link to the video recording for the session. So no need to worry about taking copious notes or if you're going to miss any details. So without any further delay, I would like to introduce Dave Lewis now. As I mentioned, Dave is president of Snailworks. He's a nationally known expert on direct mail and postal matters. Most recently, he's been developing his expertise of non-mail direct marketing tools, particularly multi-channel marketing options, such as informed delivery. Along with the execution of informed delivery campaigns, Snailworks provides a very robust, comprehensive, and user-friendly mail tracking interface, among other service offerings. Um, Dave is a very entertaining speaker for those of you who may not have had the pleasure of attending one of his presentations before. I can assure you he has a knack for making even the driest of topics interesting. And luckily today our topic is pretty interesting on its own. But Dave, I will turn things over to you now. Well, you oversold me there, Sylvia, but, but thank you. And, and thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, I am Dave Lewis, the, uh, the president of Snailworks. And, uh, and someday give me a call if you want to understand the relationship between Snailworks and ProList. I mean, it's, it's hard to explain, but we're actually Snailworks sort of came out of ProList. All, all that uh, said, that's, that's our introduction. Sylvia did the Snailworks commercial for me, so I can skip that piece and we can jump right into the informed delivery promotion. So what I wanna do first is kind of level set everybody and, and talk about uh, informed delivery in general a little bit, what it is, some of the benefits, and then we'll get into the nuts and bolts of group promotion. Uh, so again, I, I'm hoping you all know this, uh, um, but it's informed delivery is a consumer facing USPS service. In other words, they made it for the consumers. They didn't make it for us. Um, it sends a black and white image of the day's mail to consumers before the mail is delivered. I just read that right off the screen. And um, that's, uh, so it, it, it's, it's a great service. If you're not signed up for, please do, because you can know what mail you're getting each day. And the pictures are taken as the, as the mail travels through barcode sorting equipment. So it's really the, the, the infrastructure was always there. They just had to capture the images and share them. So it's a, it was a relatively low cost, low effort thing for the Postal Service to do, and it's a great service. Um, for letters, it captures it that way. Flats are a little different. We'll talk about them some, but flats are, are uh, go through a different process, which is they don't have their picture taken as they go through sortation. And so you're required to uh, use a representative image. And we'll be talking about the representative images. So you have to use it on flats. You can use it on, uh, on letters, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, and of course, the big deal, the reason mailers care about this um, is because, first of all, this is where you're in many cases where your prospects are going to see first see um, your your mail piece. And it's also an opportunity for you to put another image up there and a link to your website. So how cool is that? Um, it's popular informed delivery. And this slide, actually, I think this is for a couple of weeks ago. Um, they now have more than 41 million subscribers. Just think about that. That is a lot of people. It's, it's almost a quarter of, uh, in fact, it's more than a quarter of the uh, eligible households 
in the country now get informed delivery. That's a pretty big deal. That's a lot of people who are get who are seeing your mail first before they are on an informed delivery first before they see the actual mail piece. 33 million of them get email um, digests every day. So some people look at this on the web. Some people look at an email. Again, email is, we, we think, the most relevant uh, channel. Again, more than one in five households subscribe, and it's very close to one in four now as they continue to grow this. By the way, I did a press this presentation a year ago for the 2020 informed delivery promotion. And if I remember right, it was 27 million subscribers back then. So that is a ton of growth, and they continue to add about a million a month. Um, and there's a bunch of email of mailers enrolled. Who, who knows uh, you know, if these numbers are up to the minute right now, except that there's thousands of active campaigns going at any time. But the one thing I'll say, if you get informed delivery, I don't say the campaign every day. Uh, that I, no, I didn't have one today except one from the Postal Service. So there's an opportunity. There's room there for you to stand out um, in, in, in informed delivery. So it, it's widespread, but there's still a lot of opportunity for you in it. A couple of things I want to touch on because we got questions about this beforehand. Uh, a couple of new items because we're not really talking a lot about informed delivery in general here, but there are a couple of new uh, of new features that are being worked on, and I just wanted to kind of update people on that. One which is kind of cool is called the uh, is, is called uh, reminders, uh, which is that uh, when you're when consumers get your ad, they will also have a little box down here that let, they can click to set a reminder and they can have that ad appear again within, I think it's 10 days um, or the end of the campaign. And so that is, uh, so for example, if someone, if you're trying to solicit donations and they get a piece of mail and they go, oh, I'd like to give to that cause, but I got to wait to get paid. I think I'll have this pop back up again, um, you know, next week. Uh, so yeah, that, that's one example of it. Right now, this, this program is in pilot. Uh, one in five uh, consumers signed up for informed delivery were randomly chosen to get this feature added. So if you have it, good for you. I don't, um, you know, and, but eventually it'll be rolled out to all consumers. I get the question a lot of times, when will that be? And the answer is the Postal Service really doesn't know yet, but we're hoping by the end of this year. They do tend to go into a freeze on their software and development programs about now um, until their fiscal year gets rolling. So we'll see. But anyway, that's one thing I wanted to touch on while we're here. I know it's not the promotion, but there it is. And another thing just to be aware of is social sharing. And uh, this isn't entirely popular with the entire mailing community. Um, but in some cases, the Postal Service is sharing these ads or giving, I'm sorry, they're giving consumers uh, the ability to share these ads on uh, Facebook. And uh, so, you know, it, of course, the downside can be if you have a bunch of different specific offers, someone may share an offer with other people that you didn't intend it for. Um, so they'll, it'll probably be a turn on, turn off feature. Right now, this is really only used by uh, dashboard and mobile app users, which is about 20% of the traffic. Uh, so it's just there. I wanted to make you aware that people can uh, will be sharing these ads on Facebook. I guess I'll add Google at some point, but right now it's a, it's a Facebook thing. Uh, so why run it? Why would you want to do an informed delivery campaign? So you know you're, you're sending your mail out, uh, and and they're going to see a picture of your envelope anyway. But we have found uh, our customers have found at least they get better response when they combine informed delivery, and it kind of makes sense. You're getting additional impressions of your ad. Uh, and, and, and response is kind of what it's all about. There's also a button on there, you know, so they can they can immediately connect to your website. Um, and so, particularly if you're uh, if you're selling things on the web, it's it's a great way to to link them to that um, and, and online channels. So so it does tie them to your online channels. Controlling your brand, I think that's kind of important. I know a lot of our customers are very are very uh, specific about what colors they want, what their brand looks like. So why do you want you know, a, a, a black and white picture, a crooked picture of your envelope representing your brand? So that's one of the nice things. If nothing else, you can replace that image and make it look good. And it also, by the way, when you do this, it moves you to the top of the list, uh, to the top of the, of the digest for consumers. So they're more likely to see your piece first there. Um, you do, we do get customer data from it. Um, and we get some pretty cool data because we know we can tell in a mailing um, specifically who is the informed uh, delivery subscribers are. Are they email subscribers? Do they open the email? Did they click? All, all this kind of data at, at a person level. So you can use that to append your databases as well. And uh, finally, of course, what we're talking about today, saving postage. 
And so this, uh, you know, once a year, it appears now, uh, the Postal Service will run this promotion. This year it runs, um, as we'll get into, through November. Uh, next year it is scheduled to run through December. And next year they're talking about a 4% discount, um, which, which is pretty exciting. We're, we, we, we can't wait till 2022. Uh, but we, we, we were saying that all through 2020 as well. Let's talk specifically about the promotion. Uh, registration is already going on. It opened on July 15th. Uh, we're registered. A lot of our mail houses are registered. And uh, you can't, but you can't actually run any of the ads and get the discount until September 1st. So calm down if you thought, oh my goodness, I missed it. Uh, you didn't. You can't run the promotions until September 1st, and it'll run through November 30th. Um, when you're getting into big mailings, it gets a little complicated with the dates, but generally speaking, all dates must be after September 1st. That means the induction date and the acceptance date, um, and no later than November 30th. Uh, again, when you're talking drop shipping, you get to the end of the promotion, there may be some exceptions on that. So if you're doing drop shipping, we should talk about it uh, before we get there, but uh, you'll, you'll probably be okay. Um, so again, but all, all the dates are supposed to be within that time frame. Uh, the discount, it's 2% postage for the mailed amount. And, and I say that because I, I, a lot of people ask, is it just for the subscribers? And it's no. In other words, if you mail 100,000 pieces um, and, and 20,000 of those are subscribers, it doesn't matter. You get the discount for the entire 100,000 pieces. Um, you have to take the discount at the time of mailing. And this could be an important point sometimes if you... if uh, if you forget to take the discount, if, if, uh, if a mail service provider fills in the, the forms wrong, uh, you can't go back and get it later. And the, and the postal service makes a clear point of this when they're explaining the program. So let's talk about what mail is eligible for it. Um, and it's most of what we process here at ProList, uh, not all, but a lot, most of it though. First class mail, automation, letters, postcards, and flats. And postcards, by the way, and a side you'll be reading about if you don't know it already, are going up in size. So a postcard rate first class card will be uh, allowed to be up to six by nine. That's just a sidebar. We'll probably be getting information out on that later. So, so watch all your pro list emails. Um, USPS marketing mail, automation letters and flats, also eligible. Non, which And this really is the same thing, but I like to specify it. That includes nonprofit USPS marketing mail, automation letters and flats. No packages. We'll get into what you can't do. And I don't even know why this is here, but OMAS and official government mail is also eligible. Why the government is sending out informed, I guess because the Postal Service does their own informed delivery ads. Um, they want to get a discount on their own postage. Not sure what that is, but anyway, but, I'm, but in thoroughness, I'm going to say that's eligible. Here's some things that are not eligible. Um, Non-automation mail, no barcode, no discount. Uh, carry route saturation mail flats. Very specific, but these pieces really never go through any sorting equipment, so it's tough to coordinate the image, so, so no discount for that. Uh, same with destination delivery unit flats. If you're going directly to the destination delivery unit at the post office, that's not eligible. EDDM is not eligible, no barcode, no discount. Detached address labels and detached marketing label flats. If you don't know what it is, you don't do them. Um, business to business and business to institution. And this is an important point. Uh, informed delivery does not work on business to business mail or business to, by institution, I guess, if you're mailing to colleges or something like that, which I guess suppose are not technically businesses. Um, but anyway, that's uh, so those are not eligible uh, for because they don't run informed delivery on that. Um, now, one thing that one question we have gotten is if you have incidental business addresses in your fundraising list, let's say, so you're, you, know, you, you send out a fundraising, a, a business to consumer mailing, and uh, some of your donors uh, have, have given you their business address. As long as the mail is not intended primarily for businesses, that will be eligible for the discount. That won't disqualify you. And of course, parcels and priority mail are not eligible either. Um, one thing that uh, an interesting point is that you won't see listed on the eligible or not eligible is periodicals. And uh, I've checked with the Postal Service and no one really has a definitive answer. They kind of forgot about periodicals. Uh, but someone told me basically if it's not on the eligible list, then assume it's not eligible. So I don't think it'll work for periodicals. 
So let's get into the nuts and bolts of, uh, of informed delivery and what the rules are that apply to it. Because most of the rules you're going to be concerned with involve the design of the mail piece and the website it goes to, or the, uh, or the, des the design of the ad, not so much the mail piece. Um, so these are the three components of an informed delivery campaign. One is the representative image. This is the picture that replaces the black and white image. Um, it is required on flats because there is no picture. It's not required on, um, on uh, uh, letter size mail. Uh, um, you know, and we have a lot of clients who use it. We have a few who don't. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about more, more about that later, what impact that has. The second component is the ride along ad. And this is the button. This is what people can push to uh, go to your website. This is required. You have to have a web link. You, you, you can't just say, come to our store for the big sale. Uh, you actually do have to have a web link um, included in your campaign. And finally, there's the target URL. And this sort of lives underneath the, uh, the ride along ad, if you will. So you, this is where uh, your, your, your donors or your buyers will go when they make a click. Um, so the representative image, let's talk about that first. So that's that, uh, I'm gonna go back a sec. So that's this picture up here. So the representative image, um, essentially it's gotta be an outside panel of the mail piece. You can have a little bit of modification to it, but not a ton. The back panel is okay. And the back panel is great. We think if you're sending a postcard style self mailer, uh, your, your prospects never, probably never look at the back. So you can put the picture of the back on your, in your informed delivery ad and then have them see the address side when the mail piece comes. How great is that? That's acceptable, but the Postal Service doesn't want it to look like just a list, a list of, uh, of web ads. So it's got to be clearly a mail piece. Um, the address block image where that would be, you can put it, uh, a, a message in there. And I'll show you an example of that in a sec. Um, images can be added that enhance the ride along. So in other words, that they kind of point at the ride along, they're cool. Light images have to have a black border again, so they look like a piece of mail and they need to orient the same way as the mail piece. In other words, if it's tall and skinny, uh, then the, then the uh, representative image has to be tall and skinny. Like this one from Lord and Taylor. Um, these are just some examples of acceptable representative images. Um, this one I, I like. So the, this white envelope is what the uh, what the mail piece looked like, and then they added this but this picture to the ride along button there, um, and so it, it enhanced that, and this was acceptable. Same with this one; they had a full image of the front and back of the mail piece, which made sense because it was a blank white piece, mail piece from the front. They had a little a little a bit of text in there as well. And this is actually right off the Postal Service's uh, promotions for this stuff. Um, but this, this just shows that you can replace where the address would be with, uh, with some ads. And then they put an arrow down there too. Because who doesn't want an arrow to their ride along ad? And what is the ride along ad? So that's the little button down there. Um, it must include a prominent call to action. The purpose of the ride along ad is to give people a place to respond. So there has to be a strong call to action there. The call to action must occupy 20% of the ride along area. They don't really enforce that. It's got to be prominent, it has been our experience. Um, it must have clear contrast. I'll show you one that doesn't. Um, it cannot encourage paperless options. One of the, you know, you can't say uh, click here to never get any mail from us again. They don't like that at the Postal Service. They don't want you know, to click here for paperless billing. You can't encourage a paperless option in your, in your call to action. Um, it has to have a target URL underneath it. It's got to lead somewhere. That's that's the other point of, of the uh, of the ride along ad. And here's some acceptable ride alongs. Um, and these one apply now. And you can see that's not quite twenty percent. I don't think of the area. I don't, I don't have my my abacus with me, but probably not. Uh, but it's prominent. They were okay with that. Click here. That postal service loves click here. Um, so again, give now. These are nice prominent calls to action. Those are a okay not acceptable ride-alongs. Um, this one, we, I was kind of surprised that it says click here, it's pretty big, but it was deemed that the contrast was not sufficient. Ultimately, we made the click here exactly the same, just bright red, and it was A-OK. -okay. Get empowered is not a thing. It's not really an action you can take, so it's not really a call to action. Wall Haven at Kingstown, uh, a lovely place to live, but not a call to action. Target URL is the web address for clickers. Okay, then this is what lives under, this is what, what happens if someone clicks your, uh, your ride along ad. Um, 
we, we encourage offer specific uh, and version specific uh, uh, links for this, even if the ads, even if the web pages look the same, so you can track what works and what what it's from. Also, if you send someone to your home page and it's not an e-commerce site, it can be confusing. Uh, but that's up to you. You can put whatever URL you want, as but it does have to be secure. Um, HT, you know, so HTTPS, not HTTP. Um, and the prospects won't see the URL, so it can be a long name if you want. If you don't worry about how ugly the URL may be, um, and this is a very important point, it cannot require an email address to access the site. Um, so if someone clicks on your URL and it says, you know, enter your email address here to learn more about our sale, uh -uh, I can't do that. Um, so the process of gathering of creating a campaign, gather your resources. There's not a heck of a lot of resources to gather. Um, you need a, a URL that, that we just discussed. Um, you need two images. You need a representative image. If you want a representative image, again, required on flaps, not required on letters, but we like them. And this is the back of my postcard for Dave's real estate, uh, which it will be my career when I retire from this one, which could be any minute, who knows? Um, and a ride along ad. Again, click here. I use the postal, postal services favorite term. Um, click here to schedule your appointment. And um, so the, these two images, I'd give them a, a URL. And actually, I don't have the URL on here, but I should. It's uh, it was specific to this to this property. Um, and upload this to your pro, pro list project manager. Now I'm going to show you. You can do this directly through the through the postal service as well. And I'll give you the resources to do that. Um, but it's, it's, it's really a, a lot easier to run it through ProList and which ultimately run it through Snailworks. Um, once, you've, once you've submitted it, uh, ProList and Snailworks will take care of getting the information uploaded to the Postal Service. We'll give them the pictures. We'll adjust the pictures to make them work. The images, by the way, are just JPEGs, nothing fancy, no HTML behind them. Um, and you will get a, a, a proof from the Postal Service for you to approve. And when you sign off on it, uh, the, the, the uh, campaign gets clicked, ready to go live. It'll have specific starting and ending dates, up to 45 days involved. And your mail piece will get mailed. And every day as the mail gets delivered, the ad will appear. So if you're mailing, uh, if we're, we're in Maryland, so if you're mailing from here, some of the mail goes to Pennsylvania, some of it goes to California. The pieces that, that get delivered in Pennsylvania, maybe next week, um, the ad will appear the day they get delivered. The pieces that get delivered in California, maybe a week later, um, the, again, the, uh, the ad will appear the day the mail gets delivered. That's the great thing about it. It's perfectly coordinated by the Postal Service. And they have the email addresses. You don't need email addresses to do that. Um, uh, what, to, to prove it all when it's done, we get data back. And actually, these reports attach right to our mail tracking reports. Um, and this will show, uh, for example, that this is the summary. So in this case, they mailed 275,000 pieces of which they got 19% of them were subscribers and 16% uh, uh, got emails. This had a low open rate. Usually it's closer to 60 some percent. I'm not sure why that was, but you can see how many clicks they got. So there's a lot of data contained in here. And by the way, if you look at the date, this was June, 2020. And since then there's 50% more um, part, consumers participating. So I'm sure if you did the same mailing today, the numbers would come up a lot higher. And this is just the detail information we can provide on every record. So you can see who, you know, if they, it, it just being on this, on, in this uh, report says that they're a subscriber. You can see if they're an email subscriber, some places have more than one subscriber. So they love their mail. Do they open the email? Um, you know, the non-emails, uh, did, did they click on it? So a lot of information you can get at an, 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 an most of our customers who, who use that do download it as a CSV file so they can use it to append their house files and the like. So the promotion process. Now, in this case, if you're using ProList, uh, we're going to do this for you. If you're not using ProList, then, then uh, you'll do it another way. Shame on you. Uh, but uh, so you register for the promotion. Now, this is one thing that gets done for, for, the, for the entire period of the promotion. You don't have to do this for every job. If you're using the same mailer ID, that's fine. Um, an important point here is if you're a mail owner, you are not the one who registers. Your mail shop has to register for it. For example, ProList is registered for the promotion now. Um, Snailworks is registered for the promotion. So our customers don't have to do that. Um, 
that there's an approval. So, so that's the first thing. And it's a fairly easy thing to do. You do it in the business customer gateway. Um, if you don't know what the business customer gateway is, then the rest will just get harder. But it's that that's sort of how you interact directly with the postal service. Each campaign, you need to go through an approval process. So you need to put together all the all the collateral for a campaign and send it off to the uh, promotions office to be approved by the postal service. They're going to be checking to make sure your all your pieces look right and you're following the rules and assuming that, 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 that you are, then they'll get that back to you and they'll approve it. If they don't approve it, then you got to fix it and get it back, which means you need to leave time in your schedule for things, for them to find things that, you know, we argue with them about a lot of these things over little fine details. Some we win, some we lose, um, but you want to allow a lot of time there. Then after it's approved, you can create the uh, ID campaign in the mailing cam mailer campaign portal um, and then create the appropriate e-docs that go with the mailing. Um, so this is, you know, it's, again, that's what it's nice to have a, uh, Prolist doing this for you. And you have to provide a sample piece with the mailing and hold a copy for yourself. Um, again, the, the, just, to, just to go through this quickly, the ride along image is required for all campaigns. Um, so you need to send all this, you need to send images of that for approval. If you're using a representative image, you also send pictures of the mail piece so they know what it looks like to make sure you really are matching the mail piece. Um, you also have to include, and this is important again, a live link to the website that they're sending people to in the ride along. So if your web people are still messing with the site, you can't get it approved, the Postal Service will look at the website and if the link doesn't work, it will fail. Approval is required before mailing. Uh, they say typically four days. Last, last year in the beginning, we got them turned around in an hour or two. Uh, they've been a little different this year. Some have been turned around an hour or two, some a couple of days. So uh, again, build in time. This takes a little bit, it doesn't take months, but it might take a week or two. Um, they're enforcing it very stringently this year. So that's why we say leave big hunks of time for approvals. We generally suggest if you're going to do one of these campaigns, you're wise to get it in two weeks ahead of time um, to, you know, just to kind of allow to go through the approval process once or maybe twice if it doesn't work the first time. Because um, if it's not, if it's not all taken care of before the mail goes out, you don't get the discount. And the landing page link will be tested as part of the approval process. It cannot require an email to move to move on to the next stage. It can't have a pop-up asking for an email. So when they get to it, they can't say, hey, give us your email and we'll send you a dollar. Uh, can't do that. Cannot ask for emails. The Postal Service does not want uh, emails. As they don't want this used as an email gathering tool campaign. If you do have a pop-up, you can't still, can't be an email one, but any pop-ups you have can't be sneaky. They have to have a clear X to be closed them. I, I, personally, I can't stand those things that I can't find. Ooh, I'm talking fast here, but let's we're we're on, we're we're coming in for the uh, to the finish here. Um, it is never too early for approval. We, uh, we, you know we have we have campaigns already that have been approved, um, and it's not even it's still you know first half of August. But so if if you have a can, campaign ready to go, including the website, then you can that you can get it going now and get that approval process rolling. Again, the web page must be live. Um, the details of the campaign need to be in by noon the day before mailing, but that's not into ProList or Snail. That, that's into the Postal Service. So that's our deadline to get these things done. Um, so, but you can get, once you have them approved, you can still continue to play with the list. That's not part of the approval process, just the ad itself. So if you want to continue to manipulate your list after you've submitted it for approval, that's fine. Um, just have to have those images and that URL website approved. Uh, create appropriate e-docs with your with your mailing and put PI in your in your CCR. Trust if you're not a mail house, you have no idea what this means. And and again, your mail service provider is almost certainly going to take care of this for you and claim the incentive for you as well. Um, and the mail has to deliver during the campaign window. That's the uh, you know, they have to just, uh, you have a 45 day campaign window, so you can't do, do this for a window that hasn't opened yet or the, or the last day of the window or something like that. Again, we'd never had anyone with a problem like that. The biggest problem we had last year um, was one arguing over what the call to action was and two uh, websites that, uh, that weren't ready or didn't meet the requirements. A lot of times the post service, the, uh, the the approval people would hit the hit that link and it would be a dead website. 
and you submit them to the sample. There's really nothing much to say there. A couple of things to keep in mind. Again, B2B mail does not work with informed delivery. I don't imagine it will in the next year. I think it will someday, but there's a lot of issues with that. Um, it is okay to run a ride along only ad for letters. And we have customers who do that. Um, so in other words, you keep the grayscale image and you just have your little button underneath it. Uh, the post office originally said that they got better click rates that way, but they have backed off of that, said now you get better click rates in their testing um, when, you have, uh, when you do have a representative image. So test it, you, you, you make your own call on that. You definitely wanna be testing that. Um, and then there are lots of enhancements ahead. One of the cool ones is variable URLs, which is coming soon. I, I think it'll be done before the end of this year, which is you'll be, you'll be able to append a, uh, a, a sort of a pearl. It's not exactly a pearl, but it'll be a unique web link for each piece. So you could have the my mail piece. If I click on the button, it can say, hi, Dave, we were waiting for you and be pre-populated and all that. So, so it's kind of some cool stuff that's coming down the pike. Um, some things that are different this year, uh, the time frame again, the delivery during the campaign window didn't exist last year. This, they're definitely doing stricter auditing. They've made that clear um, that you have to register ahead of time. I don't think that's an issue for most people. Um, the representative image again, must have a line around it if it's light so it doesn't just fade into the background. And then this one, I actually printed uh, the entire fine print. When you get a copy of this, you want, want to read this. Because basically what this says, if you, if, if you try to, uh, you know, they, they reserve the right if you screw up your campaign that they can disqualify you from all promotions for the rest of the year, not just this one. Um, uh, yeah, I just, it just, uh, they're, they're being very stern with this. This is new. So um, you, you're not going to be able to read it all right now, but that's just eff effectively what it says. So, you know, so don't try to cheat because, uh, you know, don't try to just, one of the things that, that we did have some people do last year is they would mail things that hadn't been approved yet and then get it approved later. Um, and if you try things that, you know, it, it was, you know, it was just no, no dishonesty intended. I don't think they just kind of got their production schedule mixed up. But if someone does something like that this year, they could conceivably uh, lose the ability to participate in any of the promotions. And uh, I don't think anyone wants to do that. So I just wanted to make sure that fine print was out there for you. A couple of resources, Postal Pro, this is how I became smart. Um, Postalpro.usps.com is a searchable website from the Postal Service. Search informed delivery promotion and you will find more about this than you possibly wanna know. Um, and Snailworks, so we do have some resources on, on the Snailworks website as well. One, one, one thing I, I really do want to follow up on, uh, which I don't have a slide for, but it's an important thing to say, which is if you're participating in this campaign, hey, 2% off, that's cool, and, and we're happy for you. But the real purpose of doing this is to give informed delivery a try if you have not. The Postal Service wants to give you an incentive to try it. Most of our clients, virtually all of our clients who use uh, informed delivery, find it does improve response. Most people don't stop using it once they start. Um, so make sure you're doing the testing, make sure you're looking at the results you get from informed delivery, because um, there really is more value to it, in my opinion, um, than a 2% discount on postage. But a 2% discount on postage is not a bad thing either. So that said, I know I'm a little bit over time, but uh, Sylvia, uh, do we have time for any questions? Wow, Dave, I'm really impressed that you got through all those slides as quickly as you did and only five minutes over time. So <laughs> kudos to that. Um, I did have a couple of quick questions that came in. Uh, one of them I can actually answer, I think, but you can jump in if you have anything else to add. It was a question about what are the costs for doing informed delivery through a provider like ProList or Snailworks? And um, does the post office charge for it? So. I'll take the first half of that. Um, as far as doing an informed delivery, adding it to a mailing campaign that you know ProList is handling, it's a $250 um, flat fee. We'll take care of getting the approvals done, all of that. All you really need to do is you know support your uh, submit your images, um, and also use Snailworks for mail tracking, which is uh, two dollars per thousand or a minimum of twenty-five dollars per job. And then Dave, as far as I know, the post office does not charge anything for adding informed delivery. Is that correct? That's, yeah, they charge negative. They give you money for using it right now. So yeah, there's no, there are no charges from the postal service. Which is surprising, but amazing as well. 
Um, I had one other question here. Do you have a cheat sheet? The Snailworks have a cheat sheet with the exact design specifications for the ride along ad and the representative image. Yeah, we do actually. And we'll, we'll uh, you know, I'll, I'll get I'll get that to Sylvia so she can include that with the handouts when she sends it out. That'd be that's a good idea. Thank you for asking. That would be great. <clears throat> and then finally, <clears throat> are most in your in your um, expertise are most informed delivery campaigns approved by the Postal Service the first time they're submitted or or is there a lot of back and forth? Um, the, kind of the vast majority are approved on the first time, but that's partly because you know we're, we we do kind of know the the ins and outs at Snailwork. so we're we're sort of pre-screening them before we put, put them in for approval. So the vast majority are approved and the Postal Service wants people to participate. They're not being unduly difficult. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. All right. Well, thank you, Dave. That was uh, that was a great webinar. There was a lot of information in there. Um, again, as attendees, you each will receive a copy of it. Please um, don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. We'd be happy to answer those and happy to get you uh, set up and on your way to adding informed delivery to all your fall campaigns. And feel free to reach out at these email addresses to, to Sylvia or I as well. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Yes. Thanks a lot. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye. Thanks.